All right, let's continue with conditionals. And we're going to start with lesson 11 and a video in section 8. So go ahead and pause and watch the video. You can either do it in code.org or use the link I provided here in the note for you. Once you've watched the video, click continue, or you can use the buttons at the top to go into lesson 11, section 9. So I'm just going to model for you how to do this coding. By all means, you can try it yourself and then come back and check in with me if you get stuck. So let's see, lesson 11, section number nine, instructions. Sometimes a cloud covers a flower, sometimes it covers a honeycomb. Use the if else block to collect nectar at flowers and make honey at honeycomb. Remember, if there's a flower, the bee only needs to get nectar once. If there's a honeycomb, the bee only needs to make honey once. And that's all he has to say. So we're going to need to move forward. Now, should I do move forward, move forward? Because I got to go one, two, or should I repeat it? I'm just going to repeat it. Move forward twice. You can do it whichever way you want. Move forward. And then when he gets there the second time, I'm going to use this new conditional block. If at flower get nectar else make honey i think i also had the choice i could say if at honeycomb make honey else get nectar because the direction said it's either going to be a flower or honeycomb i'm just going to stick with the original one of the flower So it was honeycomb, if you saw it. I did if flower get nectar, and the bee went over top of honeycomb. So it, it did else made honey. I'm going to click continue. Now I'm in lesson 11, section number 10. Look carefully at the code below. What do you think will happen after you click run? Remember, there will only ever be one honeycomb or one flower behind each cloud. When you're making your own game, you can change it up. But this is just for us to get started using if else blocks. Go ahead and use the multiple choice to answer it now. The bee will get nectar at each flower and honey at each honeycomb. The bee will try to get nectar from both flowers and honeycomb. The bee will try to get honey from both flowers and honeycomb, or I don't know. So when run, the bee is going to move forward. So that means he would be here if at flower so if there's a flower he's going to get the nectar if there's not a flower he's going to make honey and then the leap bloop gets repeated he'd go move forward again and then it would if a flower would get nectar and then it would just jump right out if it was a flower to repeat another time move forward if flower get nectar else make honey so let me see those choices again the bee will get nectar at each flower and honey the bee will try to get nectar from both flowers and honey. The bee will try to get honey from both flowers and honeycomb. The bee will get nectar at the flower and honey at the honeycomb. Next. It's a challenge puzzle. Are you ready? I'm going to walk you through it. There will be either a flower or a honeycomb under each of these clouds. Collect nectar once if there is a flower. Otherwise, make honey once because there is a honeycomb. So this should be easy. I'm going to go the direction that the bee is facing. So I'm going to have the bee go forward, forward, forward. Check for everything and then turn. I'm going to repeat it. Forward, 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 check for everything, and turn. Repeat it. Forward, 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 check for everything, repeat it. Forward, 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 check for everything. And then um, turn, and we should be good to go. So I just need to go forward, forward, and then check for everything. So I'm going to use my repeat block right away, because I know things have to be repeated. I could do a repeat block around the forwards, but since it's just... 
um, three blocks, right? Forward, forward, forward. I'm just going to write forward three times. And then I, if am I, a, I, if I am at a flower, I want to get nectar. Else, I want to make honey. So if I'm at a flower or honeycomb, uh, if, uh, oh, here it is. Collect nectar once if at a flower, otherwise make honey. So I go forward, forward, forward. If at a flower, get nectar, else make honey. And then I said I have to turn. So if I'm facing down, I would have to turn right. Okay, so that would be one time to this cloud, two times to that cloud, three times to this cloud, and four times to that one. Let's try it out. I hope that you tried it before you watched me, and hopefully you were successful. I wonder if you did anything different. Oh, it said I could have used eight blocks, so let me try again. I'm going to take out this here, because these four, those three four words, they're saying I could repeat and use less blocks. So let me put another repeat in here. So I went forward three times. Put this back in there. Let's see what happens. There we go. It was seven lines of code. And so I did it in the smallest number of blocks. The reason you want to use the smallest number of blocks is because you don't want your code when you're making an actual game or an actual app to be longer than it needs to be. You want it to run as efficiently as possible. All right, collect, this is lesson 11, section 12. Collect all the nectar or make all of the honey. You can only collect nectar from flowers and make honey from honeycombs. Check any space to see if there is a flower or honeycomb. There will only ever be one flower or one honeycomb behind each cloud. So answer the question here. How many times am I going to repeat? Go ahead and pause and try to do the code yourself and then press play again for to see my answer. All right, I'm going to repeat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know I'm going to be going seven times and I'm going to be going forward. I'm not turning at all here. And every time I go forward, I have to check for a flower or honeycomb. Just because I've been using flower every time. This time I'm going to switch it. I'm going to say if at honeycomb. If at honeycomb, make honey. Otherwise, get nectar. I think that's all we got to do. Let's try it. Wonder if you've got the same thing. Ta-da! Okay. Lesson 11, section 13. Conditionals can be helpful even when you know exactly what is in each spot. Collect all the nectar and make all of the honey. This is just like the last one, so that's kind of funny. It just doesn't have any clouds on it. Maybe you want to switch it up if you did it a little bit differently. Last time I did the honeycomb first. Maybe this time I'll do flower. I guess the reason they probably explained this to you is because if you were coding and you didn't have the clouds, you might have said, move forward, make honey, move forward, get nectar, move forward, make honey, move forward, get nectar. And you could have written every little step out. But the beauty of these conditionals with an if and an else is you can write one block of code and it's just going to check and be really a simple code to run through all of those different scenarios and you don't have to write each one of them out. When you're starting to code, you might write each thing out, but then once you see a pattern or you see things repeating, it's always a good idea to try to go back and see where you might add in a conditional or a repeat loop 
or maybe even a function. Because if you are playing an app and you realize, hey, if this happens on different occasions, you might write a function and put that in your code instead of writing out the steps every single time. I hope you had good luck doing this lesson. Please give me some feedback if you like having the tutorial video to follow along with, and I will hopefully get to talk to you soon. Hope you're well.